I welcome all the students to this course industrial wastewater treatment and as the name suggests this course deals with volume characteristics of wastewater generated in various industries and various options available for treatment of this wastewater and at the same time also application of waste minimization concept for reduction in volume as well as strength of this wastewater. So, I am very happy to interact with you all. Now, let us look at the broader objectives of the course. So, through this course, students will be able to learn sources and characteristics of industrial wastewater, impact of untreated wastewater on receiving body. What happens if the waste is not treated? Then various options for treatment of industrial wastewater to meet the stipulated standard by government agency. In our case, that is Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. The fourth number is benefits and techniques of waste minimization in industries. Okay. So, we will start with unit 1 which is characteristics of industrial wastewater and affluent standards and objectives of this lesson 1 are to understand water requirement in industry, to learn industrial scenario in India and to understand characteristics of industrial waste water. Okay. So, the outline of lesson 1, it includes industrial scenario in India, then general water requirement in industry, scale of water consumption in industry, water budget for industry and sources of wastewater along with environmental impacts of untreated industrial wastewater. Let us look at first point that is industrial scenario in India and as you all are aware that industry pay very vital role in economy of any country. The industrial production output decide economic status of the country and China is number one because of its highest output by industry. So, basically we can classify industry into two broad categories agro based and non agro based. Now, irrespective of this classification, industries are associated with environmental pollution. The scale of environmental pollution by industry is much, much larger compared to that by automobile sector or domestic sector. Industries are known to emit huge quantity of many, many air pollutants. Simultaneously, there is also issue with very high noise labels in industry to which workers are exposed and suffer from psychological and physiological effects. Industries are also known to generate huge amount of 
non hazardous as well as hazardous solid waste and very important it generates huge quantity of wastewater so most of the industries they are known to pollute environment because of emission of air and release of wastewater along with noise pollution and solid waste problem okay so normally water requirements so three main purposes for which water is needed in industry one is for process which includes preparation of raw material even as addition or part of process and cleaning of process equipments the second purpose is utility which includes water used for cooling purposes water used for steam generation quenching which is sudden cooling and softening these all purposes they are categorized under utility purpose third is domestic purpose which includes water used for kitchen toilet uh, bathroom that is sanitation purpose housekeeping etc and only for large industry where flammable material either raw material or product is stored in large quantity or hazardous material is stored so for emergency purpose that is fire control or accidental speed cleaning for this purpose huge amount of water is stored and that is under category of emergency purposes okay. now the scale of water use is much much larger for industry and sometimes a single industry the water consumption may be more than the water requirement for a entire city and we all are aware that fresh water is under continuous threat of contamination and pollution depletion also water budget is an effective tool to regulate or prevent waste of water in industry how much water is needed only that much water is utilized so this water budget is very important for industry it also helps in cost reduction how so industry has to pay huge amount as water says for its water consumption to the government reduction in this quantity obviously will prevent waste of water and help industry to reduce this cess okay so how water budget is prepared so the first step is you go for general equation of water balance how much water is put in or pumped it should be equal to water which is going as output that includes water in uh, product and then loss or waste so waste water if there is something missing if this is not equal that means somewhere water is wasted and then industry can identify and try to correct it so that waste of water is prevented 
the preparation of water budget is also mandatory for industry it is part of environmental audit which has to be submitted by industry and it one more benefit of water budget is it promotes reuse and recycling of wastewater in industry so very useful exercise you can see water budget for the sugar industry which has capacity of about 5000 tons sugar cane per day the four uh, see the various purposes for which water required is there in first column washing cooling boiler dm uh, regenerator and domestic and here you can see the maximum quantity cooling 1000 meter cube per day and boiler 2400 meter cube per day the amount of wastewater generated from each stream or each source is given in the last column and you can see here that cooling 900 meter cube per day of wastewater and boiler the steam condensed 1920 meter cube per day now these both the streams the indirect cooling no contamination steam condensed no contamination so they are relatively clean sources and without any extensive treatment just by bringing down the temperature you can reuse this wastewater that means nearly 3000 meter cube per day of wastewater is ready for reuse it won't be part of wastewater and it will not be disposed of so this is huge amount of water saved which is reuse so you can understand significance of water budget now let's look at sources of wastewater so normally wherever there is use of water there is likely a source of waste water so the sources of waste water are also same like where the water is used now let's look at the characteristic of industrial waste water so physical characteristics which includes color this varies from industry to industry solids these are also varies but many industrial waste water they have very high suspended solids and dissolved solids temperature is normally high and some of the industry especially chemical industry produces waste water which is quite strong order order chemical characteristics organic constitute which includes biodegradable matter and non biodegradable matter then acids alkalis nutrients toxic chemicals like cyanide heavy metal pesticides some gases like hydrogen sulfide methane form producing substances radioactive materials especially from uh uranium mines and nuclear fuel processing units and refractories now this is very peculiar characteristics of industrial wastewater where your conventional treatment is not sufficient to remove this constituent and hence we call refractories okay then biological characteristics industrial waste water are likely to contain many viruses bacteria pathogens that is this is causing bacteria so 
Now we know the characteristics of industrial wastewater. Let's try to compare it with domestic wastewater we call sewage. How you can differentiate this industrial wastewater from sewage? Okay. So I want all of you to take pause and give thought on this. Try to differentiate sewage and industrial wastewater. You might have thought on various differences based on physical, chemical and biological characteristics which we discuss like temperature, color, solids, pH, BOD, COD, heavy metals, presence of microorganism. So if in general the temperature of industrial wastewater is high, color may be different different especially dyes and textile units, solids are high, pH can be extreme acidic or alkaline, BODCD values are higher, heavy metals which are absent in sewage, many industrial wastewater they are present. Most of the industrial wastewater the microorganisms are absent, only few industry produces wastewater which contains microorganisms. Now, let us think if this industrial wastewater, if it is not treated and disposed of into water bodies or receiving bodies like streams and rivers or on land for irrigation or in public sewer and sewage treatment plant. What will happen to this receiving body? The nature of industrial wastewater is such that if it is released into any of this water any of the body without treatment, it will have very detrimental effect. It will destroy ecology of rim. Uh, streams and rivers, it will cause the anaerobic zone development, odor, color, dead fish. So, any case you cannot dispose it on in streams and river. On land, it will cause uh, block of all the pores, anaerobic zone and main threat is groundwater pollution. And if disposed into public sewer and STP, it will result in shock load of the STP and there will be malfunctioning. So, we can conclude that wastewater from industry must be treated before it is disposed of. Okay. So, I hope you have enjoyed this session and in the next session that is lesson number 2, we will talk about characterization survey, affluent standard for industry and treatability studies.